welcome, Sean. Sean, to, to refresh. Uh, so Sean is uh, the COO of BioNTech, a company in the field of the mRNA therapeutics. Uh, for those who don't know mRNA, um, this technology has a huge potential for, for cures. Uh, you can imagine that you can make the, the drug produced by, by your own body through the, the messenger RNA. Um, and BioNTech is one of the companies in this field. Um, so Sean, the, the first question uh, I will ask you about BioNTech uh, is about the, the strategy of the company. Because you have a, a particular strategy, you also uh, use personalized medicine and next-gen next sequencing for, for your, your therapeutics. Um, can you tell us more about this approach and also about the, the field where you work? Yeah, so, so we set up um, <coughs> beyond, <coughs> excuse me, beyond tech to, um, uh, to really provide individualized immunotherapies with the recognition that actually a lot of people have, uh, have, have seen this uh, for a long time, which is that um, if you try and compare, compare two patients' tumors, they are never the same. They're always different. And so if you really want to treat cancer effectively, and we are a cancer company, uh, we, um, we recognize that. And uh, we're building a company where we provide these individualized treatments, custom made for each patient. And um, <clears throat> uh, I think the technologies of today, the digitalization of medicine really really allows us to do that. And our, our strategy long term is, 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 to, is to build a global biotech company. We're not following any venture-backed strategy of selling the company to a trade or to an IPO. We're building, and that's our strategy. OK, great. And that's, that's uh, yeah, not always the case for biotech in Europe, so that's, that's good to, to, to know. Um, about the personalized cancer, I, I just want to, to know a bit more really about the, um, the approach to personalized cancer with mRNA technology. Like, how do you manage it with the, the science? Like, really? Yeah, yeah we, have, we, we have a number of approaches. Um, uh, um, probably um, the most asked about is the uh, neo-epitope-based um, approach where um, uh, each patient gets a specific neo-epitope encoded vaccine based upon their tumor profile. So we, we sequence each patient's tumor with next generation sequencing. We identify the mutations in the tumor. And, and as you, everyone knows, cancer is, is effectively a disease of mutations. Uh, and then we rank those mutations according to uh, immunologic, immunological principles, what will be the most effective to create an immune response. And, um, and then we uh, slot the sequence into an mRNA backbone that we've optimized for uh, expression in dendritic cells, and we manufacture uh, the mRNA and ship it to the patient or to the hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we, we will now talk about the, the field of mRNA therapeutics. There, there is not so many companies working in this field. Uh, so BioNTech, of course, we can also mention CureVac in Germany uh, and Moderna Therapeutics in, in the US. Um, what we have seen recently is that uh, this field uh, attracts a lot of money from, from investors, from venture capital. Uh, but there is very little data, actually, about clinical data, about what's going on in, in the pipeline, um, especially for, for Moderna, if we want to, to take an example. Um, but on your side uh, at BioNTech, I think you try to be more transparent with your data. You try to publish more. Can you tell us your, your strategy on this, like the publication of data the, 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 and the data in this field more particularly? Yeah, we do publish. Um, we publish for uh, uh, two reasons. Um, one is that we have found it attracts uh, really good scientists to the company. 
uh, and two, it also attracts additional act academic collaborators. And I'll give you one example of um, uh, the, the effects um, of this uh, publication. So uh, <clears throat> there is a, um, one of the worldwide leading experts, biochemists, in mRNA uh, biochemistry, who was based uh, in Pennsylvania, at University of Penn. Uh, having seen our publications uh, and talked to us, she moved her lab to Mainz. Um, that is our strategy to attract these top scientists. And by the way, uh, her basic research is the foundation for Moderna itself. So it's a, um, it, it, it really does attract very, very strong uh, um, scientists. And on the, the, we can talk about Moderna. Um, during a long time, they, they, they seems to hide a bit the data on, on their pipe, and it was a bit a culture of secret. Mm. Um, do you know their strategy, or do you know why? Uh, I have to say I, I, I don't, and um, uh, you know, I mean, it's not trivial making mRNA products, and um, uh, we should we should recognise that with each of these companies, Kiovat, Biontech, and 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 and, and Moderna, that uh, uh, there are certain challenges that you need to overcome, and I suspect that Moderna are, are trying to do that, which is why they're being <coughs> quite quiet. Okay, um, so you you mentioned that you attract a lot of uh, scientist talents, but also actually from from the industry you have already big partnerships. Uh, we can mention the the partnership with Sanofi. It's over one billion of uh, potential partnership, uh, and Genentech also. Um, can you tell us more about these partnerships with uh, Big Pharma and your strategy on this side? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so um, originally we, we started the company, uh, well, 550 people now, we started the company with a, with a view, as I said, to, 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 to build really a, a, a global biotech company. And, and we, we didn't want to uh, actually do any partnering, but I think if you, as a management team, you, you recognise that if you want to be first on the market, and we do, uh, in our chosen areas, um, you need to get footprint. We're, we're a German company. We don't know the FDA. Uh, we don't know Asia. Uh, and we decided, therefore, to, to undertake partnering to give us that. And um, the partnership with Sanofi does that. The partnership with Genentech does that. Genentech is the number one oncology company worldwide. Um, and in the US, it's market appeal is uh, akin to Apple in terms of the recognition of the brand name. Uh, it, it's a very good partner for us uh, uh, along with Sanofi. Our approach has been to validate each of our technologies with at least one deal. So we're talking about mRNA today, but we, we our second personalized platform, Lilly, validated that. Our protein therapeutics, we had Genmad validate that with Genmad deal. And I think we've raised in, in upfront, um, one has to be careful with buyer dollars, but in upfront, I think it's always a good measure, is, uh, is around, uh, about around 450 million US dollars from those partnerships. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, and on, on these partnerships, uh, about the the science and uh, what they are looking for, especially these this partners. Can you tell us a bit more on, on the mRNA uh, technology? Yeah, uh, I, 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 th I think they um, recognize our expertise in uh, mRNA and uh, the use of that with those partners uh, to uh, develop immunotherapies because um, we see the we see, we see these platforms as tools. What's fundamental is really an understanding of the tumor 
and how it reacts with the immune system. Because if you understand that, you know what product to give. And uh, that's why we have these different approaches, because uh, no product will be truly universal. Uh, you just see that with um, the, uh, uh, the checkpoint inhibitors, the PD-1 inhibitors. They have response rates of 10 to 25%. Um, it, it's really that understanding that will allow you to decide uh, what, uh, what product to give, and that, that's, that's a very important uh, element that attracted uh, the um, partners as well as the technologies themselves that we developed. Okay. Um, so recently, one of the other mRNA company, uh, CureVac from, from Germany, has a, had a, a failure in a phase two of their clinical study, um, especially on the, on the improvement of survival. Um, we, we talked to the, to the CEO of CureVac, and he mentioned that the the conclusion of this of this failure uh, was maybe that the mRNA technology should be used in combination with other uh, drugs like uh, the checkpoint inhibitors, for example. Um, does this trial has an impact on your own pipeline, or do you do you see some some yeah uh, problems with this data? Um, Yes, um, it, it doesn't affect us at all, no. Um, our studies have been monotherapy in stage three, stage four, uh, cancer patients in late stage. Um, and uh, in fact, we, we, we have uh, two approaches. We have a, a shared antigen approach, which is antigens that are expressed across patient population. Uh, so patient population meaning uh, like breast or pr prostate or lung, and the, the, those ones um, uh, we we just um, published poster at AACR on 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 one of our trials uh, where um, the immunology looks very strong, and we will be publishing over the next two months on our clinical data from our neo epitope based vaccines, which also looks good. So. I, I don't think that really affects us. I think what you what you need to recognise though is is what will be the standard of care, and I think this is what CureVac in the back of their mind are also thinking in four or five years' time, because that's when these vaccines, whether it's CureVac or ourselves, get to market, and they will be these checkpoint inhibitors, and so therefore it makes sense to combine because that's what the expectation will be from the regulator. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, about about this technology of uh, mRNA, uh, there is also regularly a, a topic. It's uh, the delivery of the mRNA into the patient of the body. Uh, what's your strategy on the delivery? Uh, so um, we've developed uh, two two approaches. Uh, one is intranodal, uh, where we inject into the lymph node. Uh, and one is intravenous, and the intranodal was actually uh, of early studies were done in intranodal and with clinical studies. Um, uh, I think uh, we, um, given the convenience of intra intravenous, will be using intravenous formulation. Of course, formulation is always, whether it's SI RNA or mRNA, Delivering RNA has always been a challenge, and I think um, I, I think when we published in Nature last summer on our, our intravenous formulation, uh, we we were ranked numbers. I think it was 69 of 2.7 million uh, scientific journals reviewed online in 2016, and that tended to suggest that what we've discovered and applied to patients, because a described patient uh, is quite meaningful. And uh, we will be certainly using that formulation in many of our trials going forward. Um, I think we, we will take some questions from, from the audience. We have one question here. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Given the 
the situation we have discussed this morning, that the next decade will be combination products in oncology combining very expensive monoclonals with another expensive monoclonal. What is your positioning having another very expensive process? You know, you isolate the, the genetic information of the cancer of the patient, you have a full GMP process and go back to the patient. This adds another 100,000 to an already expensive therapy. Are you asking me? Are you asking me about cost or price? About your positioning in the future instrumentarium in the oncology, where you see yourself with your with your vaccination approach. Oh, okay. Um, so I think um, uh, I think um, so. We've done some research with uh, uh, German Krankenkassen, uh, uh, which are. Uh, these are insurance companies in Germany. They're, they're, they're a conservative bunch of people, and um, uh, what we what we liked, what we were surprised about, we presented the concept precisely because of what what you're raising is, you know, are people going to pay for this? And the answer is, with this conservative bunch of Europeans, which is representative, I believe, of Europe, yes. And the reason is is you know, what was so fascinating was they said straight away, this is a custom, wait a minute, this is a custom made product for each patient and each patient is different, right? And he said, yep. And they said, okay, so that's going to be expensive, right? Yep. We actually quite like it because we know today the chemotherapy works in 10 to 20 percent of patients. We just don't know which ones. 80 percent is waste. You're giving us something, providing it works, of course, that we know works in that patient. So yes, we're willing to pay for it. So I think I think more for me is, uh, and that's another question: is where does it stop when you combine products? Because to your point, I can't answer that. But what I can say is that we are investing significantly in manufacturing. We have a collaboration with Siemens to, to really drive our cost of goods down and be extremely efficient. And of course, being in Germany, a country that likes manufacturing, it's a good country to do that in. So uh, I think, um, I think we've, we're, we, see a, we really do see a commercial proposition, as does Genentech. Genentech spent one year doing due diligence on us. And of course, the commercial element of an individualized approach is very important. Do we have another question? I will ask okay. one. I have one because I'm very curious. Um, you mentioned the, the challenge of growing a, a, bio, a big biotech company in Europe. Um, I mean, we, we thought for, for, for some time that Actelion would become a big biotech in Europe. Mm. And at the moment, there is no, we, no, no big challenge. Uh, what's, the, what's the challenge to, to bring such biotech company in Europe? Um, <coughs> uh, challenge of building a company is, uh, uh, is that you need to do it very rapidly because of two things. Technology is, is, the cycles of technology are increasing, ever increasing faster. Uh, and uh, one of the disadvantages of publishing for us is, of course, it tells our competitors what we're doing, but the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. So we are, I think one of the challenges for us is actually to find the people. We're growing from, uh, at the beginning of the year, we have 500 people. We plan to be 700 at the end of the year. And it's not easy to find really good scientists. It really, despite all the publications, it's an, it's an enormous growth. And um, that's challenging. Yeah, so we come back to your strategy of transparency of the data, which totally. brings more talent. Totally. Yeah. OK, great. Uh, thank you very much. I think we are, we are done for this okay. talk. Thank Shen you. will be available uh, at the next break. So if you have more questions, feel free to come.